Time for some business news. Stephen Carroll's joining us here on set. Now, he's starting off with this uh, incredible story. A ship has actually blocked one of the world's most important shipping lanes. This is um, the Suez Canal, isn't it? And in fact, it's one of the biggest container ships in the world. The MV Ever Given that has run aground in the Suez Canal uh, and in the narrow stretch of the part of it in uh, Egypt. This 400 metre long vessel turned sideways. It's blocked all traffic through the canal since early on Tuesday morning. It was en route uh, from China to Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Now its operator Evergreen Marine Corp says that it got struck after being struck by high winds but that none of its containers had sunk. The tracking website Marine Traffic shows the ship is stuck just north of Suez port. Um, if we can take a look at that map from marine traffic. Uh, so it's just north of Suez port there. You can see all those little dots are ships that have, are currently unable to travel uh, through the Suez Canal uh, and the ships that are surrounding it where it currently is are the tugboats that are trying to move it. The blockage causing a major backup. Dozens of ships uh, blocked north and south. The Suez Canal Authority says that it's working to free the ship and that it's opening historic sections of the canal as an e in a way to try and ease the backup of ships trying to get through the Suez Canal. So how serious then is the, the disruption from this, Stephen? Potentially could be quite a lot. This is a major shipping route for goods travelling between Asia and Europe. It could be days before the ship is freed. Previous blockages have been wrapped up a little bit more quickly, uh, but the size of this ship is going to make it quite difficult to move. Last month alone, more than 1,500 vessels went through the Suez Canal. In an average year, the canal sees almost 19,000 ships pass through it and 1.2 billion tonnes of net cargo. It's around 10% of the world's shipping trade uh, and around 10% of the world's oil shipments that also travel through the Suez Canal. This is coming at a time the shipping industry has already been under big pressure because of the COVID-19 pandemic. They have extra delays at ports. They're dealing with problems trying to get crews on and off ships. So this is just one more headache that's going to be added to a really important archery in the world's um, shipping routes. Always good to have another headache, isn't it? Um, let's turn to Italy for this next story. This is a, a strike by Amazon workers there. Warehouse workers and drivers in Italy stopped work for 24 hours in protest. Their working conditions, this as the e-commerce giant, has seen soaring demand during the pandemic. It comes as workers in the United States are voting for the first time on forming a union in a warehouse there. Selena Sykes has the story. It's a first for Amazon in Italy. A 24-hour strike affecting the company's entire supply chain. Warehouse and logistical hub workers, as well as third-party drivers, joined the industrial action on Monday, complaining about their working conditions. Since the beginning of the pandemic, Amazon has seen a surge in sales in Italy and across the world. Last week, the company said it would open a new distribution centre in the north of the country to meet the increase in demand. But there are no plans to increase pay, sparking more criticism from unions. In a statement, the country manager for Amazon Italy defended the company's working conditions. Amazon offers a safe, modern and inclusive workplace with competitive salaries that are some of the highest in the industry, benefits and great opportunities for career growth. There is also growing discontent on the other side of the Atlantic. Workers at this warehouse in Alabama could make history in a few days as they prepare to vote on whether to form a union, which would be a first for Amazon on US soil. Let's take a quick look at what's happening on the markets next for you. European shares starting the day in the red. Fears over rising coronavirus cases weighing on investors' minds. You can see London, Paris and Frankfurt, they're all firmly in the red at the open. It was a similar picture on Asian markets earlier too. The Hang Seng in Hong Kong down by almost 2% after the news the city had suspended use of the Pfizer vaccine over concerns about packaging on a particular batch of it there. That's also something that investors are keeping a close eye on. Let's talk about Intel now. Um, they're investing $20 billion. This is in uh, new factories to build microchips. These are two new plants that will be built in Arizona, going to create 3,000 jobs. But it comes as the world faces a shortage of semiconductor chips that's forced companies, including car makers, to halt production. Intel's announcement will set them up to challenge the world's two biggest chip manufacturers, which are based in Taiwan and Korea. The company's shares are rising by more than 7% after that news.
And finally, almost forgotten about this, GameStop. It's uh, back in the news after its stock market roller coaster. I'm sure you'll remember earlier this year. So the video game retailer hit the headlines when a group of investors organised on the website Reddit decided to pour their money into the company, sending its shares skyrocketing. Raising a lot of questions, though, about the actual performance of this company. GameStop hasn't been doing well in recent years as it tries to transition from bricks and mortar shops to more online sales. And its latest results paint a mixed picture. Overall, sales fell slightly in the three months to the end of January, but e-commerce sales were up by 175%. The company says it's closed hundreds of stores in the past year. Didn't say a word, though, about all that frenzy on the stock markets. Shares in GameStop down by 6.5% after their results, perhaps giving us an idea of what investors think about it. Put it into better context. Thank you very much, Stephen, with Business on France 24.